All right, what's going on, y'all? We're live. Uh, sorry, I started a little late, uh, but I got Johnny Reckler here with me, and is it KJ? Yes, sir. All right, and uh, it's gonna go over some products that's been announced uh, within the past few months that uh, I'm sure it a yes, and then uh, next week we'll do one showing um, what was announced today, yes, all the new stuff. Uh, but first, y'all, y'all go ahead and introduce yourself. All right, hello, my name's um, Johnny Reckley. I'm actually a studio instructor at um, a store that a lot of y'all buy instruments from. So y'all probably see me if y'all in Fayetteville, North Carolina, at one of the best music stores that's out right now. All right, I'm KJ from K Sound Production. I am a music composer. I just recently graduated from Full Sail University with my bachelor's of science, and I'm, you know, uh, excited to be a part of this this discussion. All right, cool. Uh, let's get started. So, uh, the first thing I got on the list is the uh, is the UAD API channel strip. The um, vision vision channel strip is as they're calling it. Uh, I'm not into uh, UAD. Well, I'm not into UAD. I don't have any of their products. Uh, so, I, still, I think this was uh, cool for them to have. Um, I know they came out with the with the five fifties and the five sixty uh, a little while before that. I thought that uh, maybe the twenty five hundred uh, would be next because uh, surprisingly, I think Waves is the only one that has a twenty five hundred API plugin. Um, what do y'all think about the uh, the UAD? Um, actually, I believe one thing about UAD. I mean, I've actually seen some of the studio I work at, um, Sanctuary Recordings. Um, they're actually very good plugins, but only thing is there has been a few problems with UAD with um, the latest update on Mac. So I've kind of kept away from it myself. Um, I'm looking forward to actually you know seeing it in the studio that I work at and see exactly how it runs with PC. Um, if UAD fixed that one problem, I might look deeper into it. Um, but right now, I'm similar where I'm actually staying away from UAD because of that one reason mm -hmm. for me, myself. But um, from just doing a little bit of research, it definitely it definitely seems like it's going to be a good um, plug-in once it really hits I say probably right before Christmas I think um, a lot of a lot of engineers are actually going to be using that and a lot of um, people composing at home will actually look into purchasing this well my my experience um, I'm not really familiar with that that specific model that you mentioned but uh, I do know about UAD I'm actually a fan of uh, UAD I Started messing with them back in, I think, 2008. I had a laptop, one of the, uh, the earlier laptops with the, the big slot on the side where I was able to put in, uh, um, what was it, a solo chip on the side of my computer using their um, um, their, their plugins to prevent from overloading CPU. Um, I am familiar with the 1176. I, I love that. And when I up, upgraded to... Uh, a better computer. The, the later com computer, I was kind of upset, you know, because I couldn't use that that chip. You know, they eliminated that that slide on the side of the computer. Um, it's a lot of stuff that they're coming out with that I'm not familiar with, but I do know the UAD is a, a good name. So whatever it is that we're talking about, I know it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> but I, the only thing about UAD and uh, D. Lyles, who was supposed to join us. Um, he he uses UAD and he's been trying to get me to use UAD for a long time, but I just I feel like I got enough plugins and if I buy into UAD, um, for one I don't want another device that I have to hook up to my computer. I'm tired of plugging up different stuff to my computer. Um, that's one of the reasons I never got into UAD. And uh, second, most of the stuff that they make, not all of it, but most of the stuff they make, already have emulations of and other plugins. Um, I just, I don't want to feel like I'm, I'm buying the same thing twice. Like, um, you know, for, you know, a lot of people have the Waves API plugins. Um, so are you going to get the UAD API plugins too? Right, right, <laughs> right. 
Because it's just another name brand for the exact same product. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Ex- exactly. So that's that's one of the main reasons I haven't I haven't uh, got into UAD, and I also didn't like the um, I don't like the thought of I know you can only use certain amount of instances of certain plugins, and I don't want to get to a point to where I've well one maxed them out or two get to a point where it's like I have so many instances of this plugin I only have this instant left what's going to be the special track to get this plug in so, right but I, I still um you know, none none against UAD everybody has good stuff to say about them but I just you know if, if I invest into it I'm, it's not like I'm going to get a UAD um get like I think it's called a satellite and then get one or two plugins. I mean I'm gonna end up getting a lot more from them and I'm just too invested in other companies right now. Uh, right. That that's that's something I have gotten a little upset about because when I purchased the the solo, uh like uh I say I had it like a couple of months before they dropped a the new satellite. I'm like, wow can I get a <laughs> you know, can I, you know, return this back and get the you know what I mean? Because it's you know, cause it the, the satellite was I think it's uh, FireWire, and and I yeah. can use that across any any laptop actually, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna move on. I got uh, next one we got on here is the um, API's got two new uh, 500 series pieces. Um, which uh, I saw them at GearFest this year, and they told me they had some new stuff coming. Of course, they couldn't tell me what it was. <laughs> I uh, was messing around on Sweetwater site and actually uh, saw them one day. So uh, the, the first one I got on here is the uh, 565 uh, notch filter. And I'm going to see if I can screen share a picture of that. There we go. Oh, yeah. So that's the... Okay. Um, that is the... API 565. Um, so, good price for an API mod. I know they had price increases a year ago or a couple years ago. Uh, $600 notch filter, and he's got two mid band notches and uh, high and low pass filters. Um, the biggest thing I noticed about it was the, the knobs are, they're still traditional API knobs. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the uh, color scheming is just a little uh, a little different on them. They're more blue now than if you look at something like the um, uh, the five fifties. It's got more of a, a blue and gray. So I'm really liking the new look. Uh, it's kind of a new look, but it's still tra- traditional API. Uh, who, what do y'all think about this five hundred series piece? Well, I actually have looked this like multiple times uh, just today alone, and I mean after. After actually looking at a lot of hardware um, videos of their uh, API software, I'm really interested in actually wanting to obtain one myself. Um, I'm similar. I'm used to a lot of Focusrite um, hardware, and that's what I've clung to. But actually, after dealing with another company that I've seen, you know, dealing with Waves, um, I start wanting to see what their hardware was like. And there's been some good videos on their products. And if the software, I mean, if they made a software version of it, of a plugin, the hardware got to be a little bit better. So oh yeah, I'm, definitely. I'm in for that. I mean, I've got their, uh, I got the 560, I got their 560 EQ, um, and I've used um, the 312 mic printing studio before. Uh, so I'm I'm familiar with their stuff. I've used the the 550As, the hardware version of that, a couple times. Um, also, their um, their other company, JDK Audio. I got some products from them too. Uh, see, I I love API. I love JDK. Um, this though, this isn't. I don't think it's for me. I I can see where it'll be useful, um, but if I had one of those knobs to boost uh, and one of those to cut, I would be perfectly fine with that mm-hmm. uh, but having uh, just just a notch filter on there um, I would if I was in the market for API EQ I would spend a couple hundred more and just get the 550 or uh, the 550 air the 550 B uh, but I do see where this can be useful 
What about the price range? For, what do you think about the price range? Oh, the price range is, is perfect for, for what it does. Uh, I think the price range is, is uh, I mean, it's, you're not going to get uh, API <laughs> uh, 500 series module cheaper than that. Uh, so I was I was very shocked uh, when I saw the price of it. Uh, but it's, I mean, it's a piece that serves a specific purpose, too. So, um, of course, if you had boost and more bands on it, it'd, it'd be a lot more. Yeah. Uh, but for what it is, I think it's going to be great. And to my knowledge, that's the only 500 series EQ out that's like that. I didn't know that one. And Jay, you got any thoughts on it? Uh, you know, you guys pretty much summed it up. You know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I'm not really familiar with that with that piece. Although I I know I do need to get into it, but I'm just not. I don't know yet. Well, it's, it's still fairly new, though. Yeah. Oh, yes, no, it hadn't even shipped yet, and this is um. I'm waiting to see a. Uh, I'm I'm sure sound on sound or someone will post a video of uh, someone. So I'm sure Mark and Jordan, uh, the people I know at API, are, are out there in New York at AES uh, showing it off. Uh, but these, like, if you look closely on the Sweetwater site, those don't even look like the units. They look more like a rendered picture of it. Uh, so it's got to be. Um, I guess it should be shipping soon if they put it on there on the site. Uh, it's got to be coming real soon. But yes, that's not even a, a picture of the product, of the actual product. Um, uh, if you look closely at it, well, let's uh move on. They also got a the API 505 DI, which is something I'm uh more interested in. Um, uh, get that up. And that one, uh, so it's uh, it's a DI, but it's got some it's got some options on. It's got the tone, um, it's got a bright switch, uh, it's got different impedance loads. This is really really interesting to me. Um, I would even be curious of just running some line level signals in there, um, if it can run as line, which I'm sure it can. Uh, but I mean, for 595. API DI, uh, that's that's more appealing to me than the notch filter. Uh, not something I would need uh, right away, but uh, I'm I'd be really curious to hear what that tone, what that tone knob is all about. Yeah, I I, I would also because I'm reading here where it says a uh, punchy sound. Um, I, I'm definitely interested in a punchy sound. That's 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 something I look forward to as a as an engineer, you know, something punchy. You always need, you know, punch in your mix. So, yeah. And yeah, that's what API is, I mean, that's what API is known for. Um, but, I mean, even just, you know, getting a pair of those and running um, just like your sense through it, um, like, you know, Triton or Phantom, um, I'm just curious how that could, um, how that would sound on it and just, um, you know, increase the tone of it. Cool. I think I might have to write that one down to keep an eye out on that. Yeah, I'll definitely look. Um, I look forward to hearing some examples because the API pre's have been uh, pretty much straightforward. So this is uh, definitely them uh, taking it a little bit further. And I, I'm all about versatility. Uh, so yeah, that tone. The um, with the bright switch as well, adding a little, uh, adding a little high end. I'd, I'd be real interested to hear some, uh, some examples of this. Uh, let's see. Oh, the Elysia X filter is is what I got up here next. So I'm already on Sweetwater sites. Let's pull that up. And this is one that I have really been interested in. To the point where I'm gonna probably purchase one. I just haven't decided if I want the uh, uh, the rack version or or the 500 series yet. But that's the uh, the X filter 500. That's the 500 series. Uh, I got to hear this at uh, Gear Fest uh, this summer, and oh, nice price tag. Yeah, that, yeah, especially for Allegiance. All their stuff, all their 500 series stuff is um, 
all their 500 series stuff is at price. All their rack stuff is like 1500. Uh, D. Lyles has the Expressor, and he's actually supposed to send it to me, uh, so I can I can mess with it. I'm gonna you know send him back a couple of my 500 series modules. But this um, the demo I got of it. This is a really good sounding uh, EQ. I really wanted the uh, the Dangerous Backs EQ, but this yeah. to me um, does more than the Backs EQ. Um, and what stuck is... out to you on that? The what now? You got to hear it. Say it again. What stuck out to you when you got to hear it? Uh, mostly the the high end uh, was really good and it wasn't harsh. Um, it was playing on a stereo source. Uh, the filters is a uh, the filter has a resonance bump. Uh, so if you if you cut it, say 60, 80 hertz on the high pass, there's going to be a little bump there uh, before the uh, before the filter kicks in. Um, and you could you could actually hear that um, as he moved the filters, um, and even if you go on Alicia's site, they've got they always got great demos of their um, uh, of their gear in use. Uh, but I was I'd really went over to the booth to look at the uh, the Kush Audio Electra and left being more interested in that um, Alicia EQ. Um, all their products the the envelope, the expressor, um, they all seem to be really great at that price range. Well, I don't, let's see, it was what, 975? Yeah, 975. No, I don't see no new one coming out around around that price. Not a stereo EQ, no. <laughs> that, I mean, that's a full, that's a full stereo EQ. Maybe eBay, oh. but you ain't find no new one. Part of the reason I got the uh, um, uh, the JDK R24, uh, which is stereo EQ. Well, the R24 is a really a dual mono EQ. Um, it's it knows about a thousand dollars. I mean, there's a huge price jump. Uh, in stereo EQs or two-channel EQs from a thousand, uh, then you jump up to um, uh, something like the Clarifonic. I think is like sixteen fifty or fifteen hundred, and then above that you've got um, the Bax EQ, which is twenty two hundred. Um, there's a there's an, oh the, the API uh, fifty five hundred, uh, which is like twenty five hundred, I think. Well, I've seen uh, that. One. The Hammer is twenty five hundred, um, and the Avalon twenty fifty five. I think that's like three thousand plus. Yeah. Well, there's, there's not a lot of thousand dollar stereo EQs out there, and Alicia they they make they make quality stuff. We got next uh, next time here we got the uh, Waves J thirty seven tape. Um, oh yeah. There we go. <laughs> you know that one. <laughs> well, I mean, just, just I, I love, I love the tape sound. Um, all three. All I mean, three. I, you know, I, th- I think you made the release that uh, uh, can't remember the exact model. Is a stutter. Stutter, yeah. Stutter, yeah, yeah. When when they released that, I fell in love with the the tape sound because that means that um. See, see, I, I came up in the, the, the analog days, you know, um, with the regular Mackie 48 channel, and we was recording ADATs, and um, uh, we was doing it that way, recording, you know, everything, you know. As a matter of fact, with this boy right now, when, when I told you about earlier, I was, when I was producing tracks out of here, we would record track by track. <laughs> it took forever. Right. But track by track. And you know, it, it kind of gave me that that same effect, that same you know that that uh that analog sound. So when when the, when the studio came out, I was like, man, this is something about that analog sound that you can't get from digital. I'm sorry. Hmm. You know, so I appreciate it when they released that, and then when they released the uh the was the J37. Hmm. Yes, yes, yes. I vouch for that one. <laughs> yes. The, uh, that's the uh. Here it is. There, I will say, just by looking at it, it looks badass. <laughs> it's yeah. the best uh, tape 
uh, tape plug-in visually uh, that I've ever seen. And as I looked more more <laughs> into it, it's, it's got a lot of bells and whistles on it, too. Oh, yeah. I actually got to hear that um, yesterday. Uh, I just got to hear a little snippet um, from a good friend, uh, my mix engineer. Yeah, he's... He definitely did some nice things with that. So I'm looking. I'll probably hit him up tonight just so I can hear a little bit more of what he's been doing. I made my thing. I I don't have any tape plugins, um, and I've never really been interested in tape plugins, uh, mainly for the reason that I, I guess I feel that the tape is is vintage and old school, and most of the stuff I do, I don't want that type of sound. Is I'll most of the stuff I do is more for a modern sound anyway. Uh, but I've been I've been interested in them a little bit just to uh just to hear what they can do. Uh I think that the biggest question uh for this product is gonna be how does it compare to the other waves tape plug in, the uh the Kramer, um right. with that one. How is how does that compare? Uh, well, so, so far I hear that that um the big difference would be the um the CPU, um, the Kramer takes a lot of CPU power, and this one it does. Is so much heavy on the CPU. And 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 the other thing is, um, um, I'm not looking for that old sound either. But I know that when, once you put this on your track, it creates that warmth. Mm -hmm. You know that warmth vocal sound or whatever it is. You know that you mixing. And I do a lot of live instruments as well, so I will see why I would. Be more interested in it, but yeah, they create that warm sound you look for. You you try it on one of your tracks, you will notice the difference. Trust me. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna demo I'm gonna demo it. Um, I even I've even I, I won't lie I've even been looking at the um the Neve uh 542 I think is the model number the uh they've got a 500 series tape uh emulation module um that has an actual tape head in it. Um, so it's supposed to sound like real tape, and I think they're, I think they're like 750. Um, but if I got one, I would have to get two because I would want stereo um, to either use on drum bus or mix down. Um, but <laughs> with my feelings towards tape, you know, I ask myself, don't want to spend 1500 uh, for two tape modules um, to see what they have to offer uh, versus a versus a plug-in. Uh, something like the Neve, I'd, I'd definitely have to to hear it. Um, but there's definitely been a lot of tape plugins coming out recently. Slate did his what last year. Um, That's actually pretty good. That again? That that Slate one is actually pretty good. Um, we actually used that um, at the studio. They actually did that on the um, live recording at a um, church last weekend. Um, it actually turned out real good. Hmm. I was one of his first go-to plugins, and it was it was a very very good recording. Yeah. And he ran it. Um, it wasn't the studio live. Uh, no matter of fact, I think he was using no no he was using a Yamaha. He was using one of his Yamaha um, consoles. But I mean, it came out real good. Yeah, I can't I can't knock it till I try. I'm, I'm gonna have to try it. Um, there's another thing uh, interesting if you look at um, at the Waves uh, J37 tape, it's um it's on sale for 149 I think. Yeah, um, that's, then, that's like out this world. Uh, <laughs> and they got the. Uh, I don't think that's gonna last. That ain't gonna last all the way to Christmas. <laughs> sale price. <laughs> <laughs> you got probably to the end of this month, then you're gonna see the real price of that. And they've oh, got man. um. The other bundle that they have that has the tape plug in the tubes the, the was it tubes tape transistors bundle it's one forty nine right now too and you get three plug ins you get the the pie compressor the HLS channel strip and you get the tape plug in um, so that's that's something if you're gonna spend one fifty um, you know you look at that bundle where you get three plug ins versus just as one tape plug in one thing also about waves um 
they do have a lot of different sales coming around from Thanksgiving to Christmas. All the time. Make sure you catch the right one. All the time. I don't buy nothing. I don't. I have never in my life bought a plug-in that wasn't on sale. <laughs> <laughs> never. I I always wait because this gonna is gonna. Now I almost bought um, I almost bought soft tube. Um, off of sale just because soft two never had sales and then finally um, they finally had a sale and I was like yes give me everything <laughs> <laughs> I've got my good share of uh, sales from my job I, I plan to retire from there <laughs> <laughs> even um I want to I mean, Mick, uh, McDSP uh, has good sales too. I bought some stuff uh, from them just off impulse because because of the sale price. Yeah. I was like, I didn't even know of, of, of the retro pack. Yeah, um, I had the, the one from about a year or two ago, so I, I need to update because hopefully we can get to that one pretty soon. Yeah, we can we can go ahead and segue into that. Um, McDSP, um, they released three new plugins, but the one I think everyone is most interested in is Ultimate EQ. Um, I think it's the one that's going to really stand out and be the most popular, which uh, I guess everyone kind of felt that it was uh, coming. Because even in my um, my Ultimate Compressor review, the very last thing I said is that they need an EQ uh, for yeah. this, and they finally got it. And... You know, like I was telling you earlier, I don't need any more plugins, but just because I have the compressor, I'm gonna probably go ahead and drop the I think it's like 150 right now and get that uh, get that ultimate EQ to match. Cause see, a lot of people don't look at um, you're getting 10 for 150. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, wow, that's a that's a no brainer. And like you said, have you seen the compressor? I that. mean that the um, I mean the compressor, um, I just I, I use it all the time, and it's because it's ten and one. It's so easy. If something's not working, I don't have to load up a whole other plugin. I can just flip to a different compressor and and try that. And each one got a different sound to it, so uh, I don't I don't see why y'all. Why well, nobody wouldn't want to purchase this for this price? Unless they got over 300 EQs already on their computer. <laughs> I will say I've got, and the only reason I don't have it yet is I still got an iLock one, and I think this requires an iLock two, and I don't want to pay for an iLock two. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm waiting for um. Uh, Slate, when they announced the uh, virtual bus compressor, they had a sale um, where they were giving away a free iLock 2 with the purchase. I should have jumped on that, but I didn't. Um, I said, I'll, I'll wait till around. You know, Christmas is right around the corner. It'll be another sale. Because um, it's a couple plugins I have that I want to update, but it's going to require an iLock 2. And I'm just, I'm not paying another $50 uh, for an iLock if I can get one free with the sale. Right. <laughs> I understand that. I understand that. I definitely do. I was just checking on mine in there. Let me see. All right, we got up next is uh, the Mog Audio uh, EQ2, which I'll get a picture of that up, which is funny because I saw it. Uh, Sweetwater had posted a video of it. Um, while I was at Gearfest, actually, um, I guess they weren't supposed to because they end up pulling the video and making it private. Uh. And, um, <laughs> when I tweeted uh, Mog Audio, and I was like, uh, well, you know, what's up with the EQ2? And they were like, uh, what EQ2? And I'm like, the one, <laughs> the one in the video. I went to the video. That's when I found out it got pulled. <laughs> but wow, this is. I'm kind of torn between this because I got to demo the EQ4 when I was at Sweetwater, and um, this uh, amazing sounding EQ, I really like it. Um, weird thing was it kind of um, when I was boosting 
say the Air Band, for example, um, I felt like it was boosting the whole. Uh, how do I put it? I feel like it was boosting the whole signal rather than just the high end. Um, even though I could tell the high end was being boosted, but it just felt like it was uh, boosting everything at the same time um, as well, which was a little weird. Um, but this, I mean, it's a two-band uh, boost only is the only gripe I have about it. I wish that the uh, that the lower band was a cut. Um, more Most times when I'm mixing a vocal, uh, the low mids I end up cutting and the high band I end up boosting. Uh, so to have two bands, and it's $5.99, which um, is more than I would want to spend for a two band EQ. Um, mm. And I mean, really, I would just be using the the air band mostly. I just, the those frequencies on the bottom band, I rarely boost uh, those frequencies. I guess it depend, depends on what the what the source is. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I would mostly be getting this for vocal work, but I, I never boost those frequencies in a vocal. Um, those are usually where I want to cut it. Uh, so, Six hundred dollars for a two-band EQ, um, just um, it was just kind of hard to justify. Yeah, probably not for me. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I believe this is also one that I've seen. Is this also the one that was that had a YouTube video where they said um, when they was boosting, it wasn't boosting the um, mids. Um. It was either this one or uh, it was another one that we're actually talking about. I want to say it was this one. I had to actually go back and check. I thought I thought it was this one, but um, it may have been. I was looking at something earlier. It may, it may have been another model. I'm not sure, but um, you know they were saying in there where um, that uh, the guy could boost the low frequency and um, not get money. That, that muddy, that muddy feeling, and for me, as as an engineer, I I can appreciate that, man. And I kind of fell in love with this one because you know I like to boost the signal without getting that muddiness. But you know, uh, after you explained that it was only a two channel, and your experience, you know, it may have been what that guy was using it for. So you know, I don't know, you know. So yeah, I, I know. I know what y'all talking about. That that yeah, this is the one. Um, where they had to get. Yeah, think he was about. using it through a a, a ribbon mic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's so that'll justify why he was using that. Um, probably we using that with a ribbon mic. Yeah, you, you said that. <laughs> <laughs> now if it came with a me. ribbon mic for that price too. See, when when they make these videos, they just trying to sell it. They don't they don't mention all the details. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> You know, that's that, you know, you got to say what you're using and what's the purpose. Yeah, I would just, I, I would mostly want that for the air band because um, I like for my, my, my hardware to do what plugins can't do. And um, I don't have a plugin reaching up to 20 and 40 K. Um, also, I think it'd be great to, to track with as well, just to add a little high end uh, when tracking vocals. Um, I've just got to, <laughs> I just got to justify the 600, uh, for two bands. That's, I mean, for 600, um, there's other EQs out there that you can get for 600 that'll, that's three or four bands and it's boost and cut. Um, it's just more right. versatile, but, um, but that's, that's just, that's not what Mog Audio is about. So, you know, they, again, it's not, it's another product that has a, a specific purpose. Right. Uh, oh, a good one coming up next here. The Soft Tube Console One. Woo! Um, <laughs> no, let's, let's, let's pause. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Yeah>. You continue. <laughs> uh, this, that was pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, um, let's get a picture of that up. I saw I saw this in person at Sweetwater. I was um, really actually the first thing I saw when I got to Gearfest uh, was the, the console one, and I was first shocked because you know it's not out yet, and SoftTube is never at Gearfest. Uh, so when I saw them there, I was like, whoa! Um, 
I got to hold one, which I guess, of course, is a prototype. Uh, but it is, it's all metal. Um, <laughs> the, the casing around it is all metal. It's, it's nice and sturdy. Uh, feels really, really good. Um, and the guy told me there, which he wasn't a, um, he didn't work for SoftTube. He was just representing them. Because, you know, SoftTube is in, they're overseas somewhere, Germany, I think. Right. Um, but he told me that they were trying to get it at uh, seven ninety nine. So yeah. I said, okay. Uh, I That's a better I'm, price than what I've seen the list of this. Yeah, I'm getting to that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it was is you know he told me they were trying to get it at seven ninety nine, and I said, okay, seven ninety nine. That's cool. When I first saw it, I was like, I actually I wrote a blog a blog post about my first impressions of it. Um. And I got to see one in person and use it for a quick second. I was like, okay, I, I can get into this. 800 um, for what? Because it really is a, it's going to be a game changer in my opinion because there's no other control service out there like this that lets you uh, manipulate um, all the different plug-in parameters like this. Uh, my only, uh, one of my few gripes for it is just that it's, uh, as of right now, it only works with uh, SoftTube plugins, or will work with SoftTube plugins. Uh, he did tell me they were working on getting third-party support, um, but yeah, he told me they were trying to get it at seven ninety-nine. I was like, you know what? That's that I, I could do seven ninety-nine. Um, the Sweetwater catalog came out um, last month or a few weeks ago, and in in the Sweetwater catalog, it was priced at nine ninety-nine. Uh, so I said, okay, that's a little more than I thought it would be, but you know, that's still it's still doable. And then now, if you look on Sweetwater site, uh, where is it? Here we go. You look on uh, Sweetwater site now. This is what we have. So Whoa. when I saw the twelve hundred, I was like, okay, this is this is getting out outside of the of the ballpark of what I would want to pay for a product like this. Um, I don't know what's justifying the uh, the price jump here, and I don't know who knows if this is even a final price. It could just be a placeholder. Uh, but what what are your thoughts on the on the console one? Well, I would love to see. I was looking at the video. Um, it, it it did say that it works with Pro Tools, Logic Pro, and various other. Um, yeah, it, it works with it works with DAWs. But my issue is, I use more than just SoftTube plugins when I mix. So for this control surface to control my SoftTube plugins, that's cool. But when I pull up a McDSP plugin or Waves, I'm right back to mixing with the mouse again. Right. Right, yeah, I, I did, I did see that. I did, yeah, I, I definitely saw that. I, I was just wondering, like, like I'm looking at the screen, like, is is it like a plugin? You just double click on it, and then it pop up, and it may blow up like that. And then if you need to get to something in the, within that channel, you just X out of it or something. I was just wondering how that works. Yeah, okay. What it is is it's um, it's a the plugin brings up that. That interface that's on that was on the screen there, um, and you you flip between and there's a button on the console one that flips between your DAW screen, uh, okay, and uh, that interface and the the console one interface. Um, but you got to insert it on every channel that you want to use it on, correct? Yes, that's another thing I don't like. <laughs> I don't like plugins. I got to put across um, everything. Um, because if if something happens, let's say the console one goes down or breaks or malfunction, my mix is gone because my whole mix is relying on this piece of hardware on the side. Right. See that, and when I when I think of that, I'm like, okay, my first plugin is going to be that if I have that. Then my next plugin, um, whether it be um, a stock plugin, or whether it be something um, Waze, McDSP, Sound Toys, anybody, it's it's still sitting there, even if I'm not using it. Um, right. Um, I, I thought with, when I first seen this, I thought it was going to be a FireWire, Ethernet, 
I was shocked as um, a USB. That that actually shocked me. Um, I understand how the. I wish it would have had some faders though. I am a fan of faders, um, but I see how like when you put on channel strips, I think the very top row. Um, that's where you can click between. I think banks are like sixteen. Right. Yeah, I seen that, and then it'll jump and it say you can go to unlimited. But you have the one. Um, you have your one rotary knob on the. Uh, I think the bottom right hand corner, where you can adjust the levels on whichever track you select. Right. Right. So, and um, oddly enough, they said they went with all knobs and not faders uh, to keep the price down. <laughs> Uh, yeah. it's, 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 it seems to me. It seems to me that uh, the way that they build it, from what from what I seen, and I could be you know missing a lot of details because it's still new, and I'm just not learning it you know myself. But it seems to me as as though they bring in their own version of EQs, compression. You know what I mean? And and you know, but you, you know, I'm not sure if they was thinking about those other people that love the waves bundles and gotta have you know they live and breathe that stuff and then you know when they saw soft tube it was like oh wow this is extra um listening to you johnny that i didn't know that either i thought that it was you know like how you know the other uh audio audio units or interfaces are you know they firewire or thunderbolt to your computer and i didn't know it was usb so i mean great concept though <laughs> yeah, I, st I still think they will. Um, I still think it'll, it, they'll, they'll do well because there's there's a ton of uh, soft tube fans out there now, um, and I have pretty much everything uh, from them. But the um, oh, one one thing I said I'm thinking about it is it's um, the size. I really like the size of it. It's not something that's going to take up my whole desk. Yeah. Um, so right. I, I really like the size of it. It's a little taller. Um, in person than I thought it would be, but the size I think is really good. Um, what I was gonna say back to USB. Correct. Say it again. So the slight angle to it, also correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, back to USB though. It's just it's like I said before, something else you got to plug into your computer. Now, um, the Ethernet I would have been totally cool with that because there's nothing in my Ethernet port. <laughs> exactly. Um, but USB, I've got a million things already hooked up. Uh, USB and um, you know you get those USB ports. Sometimes stuff does stop stop working. You got to restart the computer to get it to kick in and um, plug, it, plug it back in. Right? Yeah, unplug uh, it. Ports. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm familiar with that. Now um, the thing that I wonder also, since SoftTube is integrating with so many different um, companies, because I mean they got SoftTube with. Um, Let's see. I know they got some with Native Instruments. Mm -hmm. uh, they got like some new reverbs that came out. Um, I think they got some with uh, Universe, um, with UA, and also with like Waves. But will that control the ones they got? You know, already with other third parties because they they help create. You know, these um, other products. So yeah, I'm wondering will it work with those too? That's a that's a good question. Um, uh, I would. Uh, in my opinion, I would think no. I, I think it's just for the strictly the the uh, soft tube uh, plugins that they sell off their site. Um, but um, I, I could be wrong. But yeah, I, I I think it's a really cool concept, and uh, I think it'll do well. I don't know how well it'll do with that twelve hundred. I, I think I, for me, I wouldn't want to pay no more than a thousand for it. Um, and another thing, it, it emulates the um, uh, an SSL um, console, or the channel strip emulates uh, an SSL, which um, is great and all. But I got I got the Waves SSL. I've got um, the SSL. Um, I got their own um, plugins, uh, the Duende plugins. Um, so again, I'd be buying into another product emulating stuff that I already have again at that point. I think I think about everybody once the SSL came out with Waves, everybody was quite interested in that, and that was a, a first go getter for a lot of people. Yeah, and that was actually, yeah, that well, I think the first 
plugins I ever purchased was the Waze Musicians Bundle 2. And then um, yeah, I think later on I ended up getting the, uh, the Waves SSL Bundle, which was my uh, pretty much first big plug-in uh, purchase. Because, uh, yeah, they weren't cheap. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, Waves SSL stuff is great. And the the SSL Duende stuff is really great. Um, I had them and didn't use them uh, for a while after I got them. Um, cause, and well, they're not plugins that you just open up and use. I finally sat down and read the manual for them. And um, SSL actually did a uh, presentation at a studio here. Um, that I went to and actually got to see them uh, use use the plugins and I went home and tried them again and uh, yeah, the, the SSL Duende stuff was great. Uh, they're not cheap either. I got them, of course, on sale, <laughs> but at regular price, yeah, they're they're not cheap either. Not at all. Did the McDSP. All right. Uh, the Akai MPC element uh, was announced. I guess that was a couple weeks ago. Um, and it, got a good name. it has a very good name. Akai is backing it up. That's one of the first things I must say about it. It's got what? It's got a good name backing it, Akai. Yeah. <laughs> they, man, they were quiet for a long time on the sampler drum machine front after the um, I forgot what MPC model that was the last flagship that they did oh, no, uh, 4,000? 5,000 I think, I think it was, a, was it the 5,000? Well, they had the 2,000 then they had the XL or what was that the 25? Yeah they had the 2,500 and it was, it was one above that too I, I think it was the 4,000 was it 4,000? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I know if you look up any rap music, you'll know exactly which one is it. Why don't you look at him? Like, okay, yeah, there you go. You're right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's good to see them finally refresh with the well, what's the flag? The Renaissance, the Renaissance, the studio. Um, and you know, like you mentioned, the the fly is uh gone quietly, very quietly this is discontinued. <laughs> this is the fly. Wow, I just not, I just thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> this is the fly. Yeah, I was, haven't really I heard about them lately. Yeah, wow. I'm gonna tell you the good part about the element. Break the, price. the price. The price is low. Well, would you say it was a good thing? The price is low. Oh yeah, oh, that's impulse buy for me. <laughs> <laughs> It is good. It is definitely good for someone that is just now coming to finger drumming and really don't know how to really work with um, whether it's a controller or whether it's hardware that haven't really messed with it. This would be a little bit easier because you really don't look at the controller. You look at the screen because there's, there's a tap tempo. You got your 16 bank. I mean, you got your 16 pads. You got uh, a pad for your banks, but it's not too much more you can really look at on the pad and and your transports. It's not really a lot more. You're not gonna be doing no filter sweeps. You're not. You ain't gonna do no changing your levels, panning on the on the controller. Yeah, that that what you just said fits the name element. It's just the element, you know. Right. Not the studio is not, you know. It's not, it's not nothing. It's just the addition to what is. It's a, it's actually a markdown of the um, Renaissance. Now, a little bit about the bad side. Oh, I mean, it, it comes with colors though. It do it do have colors. It's not just black black pad so this might be good for um, probably DJs just need need a good uh, 16 pairs of uh, different sounds or different loops it's quick easy light they can take it with them and be on the go right they try to they try to into a, another market for those who don't necessarily need the studio or the, or the 
the, the big full uh, renaissance. You know, because you could plug this into your iPad, right? I don't know. don't know if this goes on my iPad because the fly didn't do too bad. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. This, it's, it's on the computer. this is the exact layout of the base of the fly. Okay. Me, about the, the iPad, there, there's a look at the at the NPC element. About all this, this iPad stuff, I just I feel like um, for you to make a product to go along with a product that is upgraded every year. Um, I just feel like if, if Apple changes one thing, you're screwed. Um, especially like these products that you sit the iPad in. Um, what if, you know, you know, Apple's always making the iPad thinner, lighter. You know, they change the, dimi the dimensions a little bit and uh, you're screwed. Your product's no good. Um, now you got to deal with, okay, I got this version product, but which iPad does this work with? Does it work with the two? Does it work with the three? Does it work with the with the one? Right. No. That's right. I wouldn't go down that path if I was creating products, but um yeah, this and John, I was telling you earlier, I had an MPC two thousand XL and uh, I still got my files for it and I just want something that I can play back my files, what I did. Uh doing a little research on this I see that it uh, supports the um, the dot SND files um, which are MPC files mm -hmm. so it, it looks like um, but that it looks like it'll let me load my sounds um, I have to find out if it can actually play back a sequence um, that's the that's kind that's, of the, the key thing there that's the tricky part about this this gives you all right, like for instance, you know how Ableton Light got their sweet and they got their light version. Right. There's the element and there's the Renaissance. This even when you see the software, um, the screen on both of them, the software is completely different. They have just they have the arrangement of at the top. They look similar, <laughs> but um, between this and uh, um, Renaissance, you only get eight tracks. Mm. Now, right. working inside. Of digital uh, DAW, everybody's going to go way over eight tracks. Mm -hmm. You can easily have eight buses on the DAW. So the only thing, I mean, my the drum tracks that I programmed on the MPC, I don't think are more than eight tracks. No, um, but well, for for instance, with those, that'll be good. But um, I don't know if it'll give you the ability to layer your pads like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to talk to Nakai Rep, see what I can I can find out. But even at the uh, uh, the MPC Studio and the Renaissance, you know, they both got price drops recently. Even at three ninety nine, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't be too messed up about investing three ninety nine um, in the studio because I, I know that for sure can uh, do what I want. Yeah, that now that can that can that's why I'm really kind of confused of. Um, why they came out with the element. Maybe just so people can get to the f say that they have the Aka, but it's still you know what? with the Renaissance. It is not it is not the original Aka Akai, Akai has always to me been backwards. I'm, I come from the NPC age as well. Um, I started out on the NPC 2000 and then moved to the XL and then found out about the the three thousand, and then the I think I heard I I, I I had a buddy that had a four thousand, but then they dropped the one thousand. Like, huh? Like, wasn't the one thousand supposed to be like the first one that dropped, and then two hundred? I mean, two thousand. But anyway, so then they did it again. Like the way I feel about NPC Studio and re like, shouldn't the Studio version be like the Renaissance version? I don't know. I don't. I, I'm not sure. Then it from the Element. Like, okay. Should the elements have been the first thing in the Renaissance? I don't know. Yeah, like step, like step up instead of stepping yeah. down. You know, yeah. But you know, I, I'm sure that you know, like the, your question earlier, you know, wondering if they, uh, uh, if you can still sequence or it reads to see the same uh, sequential files that the Renaissance in, inside of Element. I'm sure that the, I'm quite sure. That it does that, because if it don't, then 
you know, that's gonna be a big issue. Yeah. And that's um and while I'm while I'm thinking about it, like what you said about stepping up, um step down, I I feel that I don't know how y'all feel about this, but I I pay more attention um to a product uh, or I'm willing to pay more attention to a product if a company has came out with a high end product and then came out with a cheaper product versus the other way around. If they came out with a cheaper product and then tried to come out with a with a high end product. And I can I can see that also because thinking of um, what I use right now, um, I don't use the com. I'm not even gonna say the name. But let's just say that number one competition. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and they started off, you know, with what put them on the market, and then eventually uh, they had a newer version come out, and then they went to a smaller a smaller version. Um, which all three of those still, you know, do very good on sales. And then something else happened, and then there was a change. I'll, <laughs> I'll be waiting to come back and talk about that one. All right. <laughs> but yeah, if you if you came out with something that's you know a hundred dollars, and then next year you came out with something that's two thousand dollars, I'm like, uh, but don't you make that? Cheap hundred dollar, <laughs> whereas you do it the other way around. You come out with something high end first, and then you come out with something cheaper. Um, I don't know, to me, it, it makes me pay more attention to it because my first impression of you is that high end uh, product. Right. But uh, one of the good things is if you look at um, a lot of these sites that have blogs and everything, and especially when there's a, a high end product that comes out, a lot of people be like, you know, I can't afford that. I can't afford that. I wish they had a cheaper version. Right, right. When it was dropped, they right. said real quick. That's what I was gonna. That's what I was gonna say next. Maybe, maybe that's what they're noticing. You know, when they put out that twelve hundred dollar product, you know, um, and then understanding that they are in competition with the machine. Oh, there you go. You gonna let the word out? <laughs> you know, right. Like, why did I say that? You know, I had, I had, you know, I had to do it. You know, we talking too much about the Renaissance and the elements, so I had to put the machine in, in this mix somewhere. <laughs> you know, they definitely understand the competition, so they trying to, you know, put out more stuff. And okay, you know, I got something that you can afford. And there you go. So now we're gonna keep because I'm sure they know about the studio that just dropped. So then they drop the element, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, they drop the element. You get a thousand dollars on the machine, or you know, we can get you the element for, you know, a fraction of the cost. Of the cost. But I don't know. I'm just talking. <laughs> well, speaking of that, they actually dropped the price on the Renaissance the day after the uh, Sweetwater leak of um, Studio. And they and they went ahead and um, dropped a skip for um, the Renaissance because I was going I was actually going back and forth probably real hard about um, probably last week um, thinking about really purchasing the Renaissance just to see you know if it was something that I would like because mm -hmm. I mean you know I did like NPCs and I mean when it comes to when it comes to drum machine everybody knows. You know about the Rollins and definitely the NPCs, right? But they had to. They're definitely, you know, finally realized that the age of um, of hardware drum machine sequence and everything has everything is digital now, um, which is I guess where the element is trying to go. But they are. Uh, I mean, one of the smartest things they could have done was that was the software that goes with the Renaissance in the studio, and uh, at least the light version that comes with the Element, uh, so you can integrate the NPC with your DAW now instead of um, instead of having to record your tracks into the DAW uh, like you would have to right. do with the NPC. But right. like you said, it's also smart because um, if you want to do more with it. You can step up, you know, at least the software. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's it's good because some people might. Another way to look at it is good is um, it's entry level for some people. Oh, definitely. So once they get to really learn it, you know, hey, maybe I need to step up to the next stage, mm -hmm. or they can gradually move up once they you know learn that. 
and they have more, you know, more capabilities and more fun functionality. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So that's it's, it's, hard. A lot of people will buy it because of the the price level and the simplicity of it. You know, absolutely. And the name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah that name is going to definitely hold weight. But if it's someone that's, you're not going to see someone that's been, you know, composing and working with different drum machines for, let's say, 10 years. You're like, huh, let me try this. They, they would be a little disappointed. <laughs> All right. People that's, you know, new to, like, drum machines, someone that's just a piano player. But they're tired of hitting their hitting their keys on their piano and want to try something. That that'll be you know a good start for them. So. And I will I'll say my I got a um uh, my good friend Marco Dane is a um, MPC fanatic, uh, and one thing he um, is really big on is is the pads. Um, I've got a MPK forty nine. And, you know, the first thing he asked me, um, how's the pads? How's the pads? And I'm like, oh, the pads is not, <laughs> it's not, um, it's not the same pads from the, uh, from the 2000 XL. Um, and these pads as well on the element, um, they look, um, I'll say a less quality than the pads on the studio yeah. and, uh, Renaissance. But of course, that, that's the, that's the, you know, of course, keep the keep the price down as well. Now, I haven't seen the element in person, but um, at work I have played with the studio, and um, they got they got some better feeling pads. Mm. In my just of guessing, um, the studio and the Renaissance those pads are basically the same. Mm -hmm. so, um, but I don't think they put. I don't think they they use their money to for those same pads on the element. I think mm -hmm. I think they're a little bit lower down in price, just so they can save money. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna move on to the last topic we got, which is the uh, Sonox. Uh, a couple weeks ago, put out the Kodak Toolbox, uh, which is a encoder plugin, which uh, allows you to uh, do different encodes for uh, MP3, iTunes. Um, I have the Pro Codec, which which um, is similar, but it doesn't. Um, this takes it a little bit further, uh, yeah. and I'm interested in this because it is um, uh, converting it to U.S. dollars. It's like fifty eight dollars and some change uh, for for to have a standalone encoder outside of Studio One and Pro Tools. Um, can be helpful to me because I don't have to fire up my DAW just to convert to an MP3. Um, now, I actually had um, I had Logic Studio. Well, I have Logic Studio. Um, my hard drive, my iMac, died a couple months ago, uh, and I, just, I haven't reinstalled Logic yet. Um, just because I'm sorry I don't, for that loss. I'm sorry for that loss. <laughs> I don't really. Um, I, I had my stuff backed up, but I didn't have my um, my programs and everything backed up. So I did have to reinstall Pro Tools. I reinstalled Studio One. I just I haven't reinstalled Logic because um, I just I don't really I don't really use Logic uh, anymore. However, the uh, one of the products that came with Logic Studio was called Compressor. Yeah. Uh, which is a uh, encoder, and it is the best MP3 um, encoder that that I've used. Um, I thought about reinstalling it just to get a uh, compressor back, but I can um, you know, I can get this for sixty dollars and do the same thing. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, <clears throat> well, going back to the machine as a machine user, I will see this being really beneficial because uh, and and of course I'm speaking from the uh, 1.8 version because I'm not sure I'm sure the 2.0 they, they did some things where they you know change the encoders but like you know, working in machines for those native instruments you know lovers the way to export your file after you do a beat is always wave and have something like this you know or anything that you're working with Wave or whatever, you know, drop right in here and import it to MP3. That that's that's definitely awesome. 
yeah, outside because I have to always fire up Logic Pro or Pro Tools in order to you know get the MP3 version. And that's like you know sitting here waiting for a minute for it to load up. I don't have to go through all that. You know what I mean? Mm. Like that's just, that's too much. You know, it's, it's frustrating. That's that's pretty cool. And you know what? I wouldn't doubt. Um, even like as we were um, talking about earlier with the MPC Renaissance, I don't believe when I was um, looking at theirs, I don't think you can go to MP3 on there. I think you would also have to, you know, definitely invest in, you know, this plugin right here. Oh wow. Okay. Well, that's on my list then. <laughs> so that's that's a thousand and fifty-eight dollars now. <laughs> <laughs> I got a um, and I I think this uses the iLock too as well. So that's another reason I haven't bought this yet because I don't have an iLock too. Um, but um, yeah, I, I definitely see a use for this. Um, and it, it also allows you to um, for example, play a mix and you can cycle through different um, different encodes like MP3, Wave. Um, and hear how it sounds like and compare it in real time, which is um, just amazing. That, that's great. Now, that one, I don't know nobody else doing that. Now, the, the Pro Codec uh, can do that um, as well, um, but I think this is more of a standalone. Um, not, it's also a plug-in, but I think it's also a standalone uh, application, um, which is... Um, which I say again is great when you just need to convert some files real quick. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it also yeah. allows the uh, metadata um, as well. Um, that's yeah. That's high. I mean, nowadays, I mean, like all of us, we in we in three different states. Sending something real quick and checking, that cuts time. Oh, definitely. Very quick. And with the with the metadata, um, that's great too. Because one of my um, uh, huge complaints is that I, I get stuff from artists and it's not tagged, and that drives me crazy. Um, but one of my good friends put out a mixtape and he let me hear it, and I you know I loaded it into iTunes and track one, track two, track three, track four. Man, I'm like dude, you get you Worse. gotta have your stuff tagged. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> that's, that's huge to me. That's, that's really huge to me. Um, Please. Just as a presentation. Producers, artists, listen to that name, your tracks, everything. That, no that right there. That speaks for you know to your integrity. If 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 you somebody that claim that you do whatever and, and you send somebody something to say track one, I already know where you stand. <laughs> 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 know who you are, because you know that's that's very important, you know. So I, mean, I, I appreciate that. Now you should have seen what happened when um uh these clients I mixed for I I tagged their song um because when I'm doing a mix I always ask them how do you um you know I can send you a wave and MP3 if you just need the MP3 a high quality MP3 we can do that. Um, I sent them the MP3s. I had it tagged. Um, I even added the artwork, um, uh, artwork for their album on there, and they were just blown away because when they, you know, put it in iTunes or you put it on the iPod or the album <laughs> cover comes up, the name comes up, and they were just, they were just blown away. And it's like you know, all I did was <laughs> open up the metadata and type in some information. Right. I don't. I don't know why so many people look over that one fact right there. I mean, it's organization. Right, right. It's, I mean, I can't think of another word to call it. Just or, It's organized. Yeah, you know, a lot of people don't think that that's important. You know, people, people like us that do this for real, um, we have so much of it in our hard drives, so it's very important that we keep everything organized, that's how we find stuff. You know, people that don't do it on a regular basis, they just, you know, wrap it up and send it to you and, and think nothing of it, and, you know, and we got to train and school these people as to how important this is, and then, you know, this also, I think it also speaks to how a person is, period, you know, if you're not organizing your session, you know, imagine how they room look or their house look. You know what I mean? You know, if you organize, you know, session gonna be organized. That's just 
And I found that to be very true. You know, somebody sent me a dirty track, I go into the house, it's not that clean. So. <laughs> Man, we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> save old, that for a whole nother. <laughs> don't see me no dirty track, cause I I know exactly who's hanging off your closet door. <laughs> session session organizing. That's we. That's a whole nother discussion there. Yeah, but it's important. Make sure you I was um, that one. <laughs> I was um I spoke at a uh, convention in Dallas a couple years ago, and uh, there was a DJ there. Uh, that spoke, and he was saying, um, "Don't you know if you want me to play your song?" Um, you know, because he, he said, "You know, I'm always looking for new stuff to play. I'll take your music. I don't care. But you know, if I put your computer, uh, or if I put your CD, or no flash drive, he said, give me a flash drive. Don't give me a CD because it can, uh, you know, while I'm DJing, you give me a CD, it crash my computer. Now the whole club mad at me." Right. Um, you know, give me give me a flash drive. Uh, but he said, if you know, if I load that flash drive and I see track one, I'm taking this stuff right back out. <laughs> yep. Yep. And speaking of like DJs, like for instance, um, I grew up around uncles that were DJs, and when they're finished, you know, um, recording their mixtapes, I mean, I would be right there with them, writing on a Maxwell blank cassette, you know, the name on both sides, and then on the cover, writing down each song that was mixed on there. Right. I'm like, I, I remember from there when it was taped, so I don't see why they can't do it with a little quick type. <laughs> mm -mm. But it still happens. Yeah. Man, that's, <laughs> that's everything we got, man. I'm um, glad y'all joined me for this. Um, if everyone's down, we can do one next week of everything that's uh, coming out now at AES. Um, and cause I've already seen some... Uh, some uh, new stuff that was announced. Uh, but we can get into that next week if y'all down. Um, absolutely. I'll definitely check because next week is my birthday. And hopefully they have the studio at a price I can go ahead and purchase it. <laughs> at my job. Um, if, not, if, it, if they do, I probably will not be able to make it because I will be looking at it the whole time like this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I need a, I need a day alone with it. <laughs> but, um, if I'm free, yeah, I'll definitely I definitely um keep in contact with both of y'all so y'all can know exactly how I'm, how I'll be next week. The same, cool. Uh, I guess before we sign out, I guess everybody um just um tell everybody how they can reach you. Um, well, you can reach me. Um, I have multiple, but right now you can actually reach me at Johnny directly at musician dot com. Or you can also reach me at um, jrrreckley at aol.com. Oh, okay. I'm going to look you up for real. I didn't know you had it. Okay, cool. Well, this is, this is KJ signing out. You can find me um, all over. Actually, you can just Google K-Sound, K-S-O-U-N-D-D in your Google and everything. I'm on Twitter, MySpace. Yeah, I'm on MySpace, MySpace, Facebook. <laughs> Um, tool. Um, my official website is www.ksound.com and all the links are there. So, yeah. All right. And y'all know y'all can reach me at audiozard.net as you see there or uh, at audiozard901 on, uh, on Twitter. Absolutely. All right. All right. Catch y'all next time. I greatly right. appreciate this. Mm -hmm. yeah, have a great evening.